Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Rethink Connectivity. My name's Jeremy, and today we're going to be talking all about Nat's Jetstream. Just a little recap from last week, we covered Nat's Core. Nat's Core included the basics of pub, sub, request, reply. We demoed fan in, fan out, and those wonderful queue groups. Uh, this time, we're going to be go jumping straight into Jetstream. Now, Jetstream is a really powerful and modern persistence layer that's built on top of Nat's Core, which means you get to use all of the same Nat's pub sub APIs, but you get to opt in to have certain messages persisted or stored on disk so that it could be delivered later. And when you combine this idea of persistence with this little atomic unit of a message, you can actually create some really powerful constructs on top of it. Things like key value stores that are distributed or object stores that are distributed. And so we're gonna go into some of those details today. But first, let's start by running our NATS server with Jetstream enabled. See, NATS runs off of this hybrid model, which means when you're starting to cluster and scale your NATS servers, you can run some of them as NATS core servers, or you can run some of them as NATS Jetstream servers, and you can kind of mix and match depending on the scale that you need. And because these streams or assets are persisted on disk, it means uh, you have a lot of power of where to choose to put your data, which is great for distributed systems. Let's fire up a Jetstream compatible server. Just like last episode, we'll run NAT server run, but this time we'll pass in the Jetstream flag. And just like that, we're ready to play with Jetstream. Keep in mind that we've generated a context by using NAT server run, this NAT's development context. So I gotta make sure that I have it selected in the CLI. I can do that with the NAT's context select command. Now that we have our context selected, let's list out the streams that we currently have inside of this Jetstream. We don't have any. so. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over and I'm going to run this command again, but inside of a watch statement. That way I can check back here just to get some more info on the streams that I'm messing around with. Now in this episode, I'm gonna drive everything through the CLI, but this is just a reminder that the CLI is just here to demonstrate how to create streams. You certainly can create your streams all through the CLI, but you can also create streams through Terraform or you can create them directly in the client libraries like the Go SDK. To create our first stream, we'll simply type nat stream add and it's gonna ask us for a couple options. First one being name. I'm going to give this one a name of orders so I can simulate kind of an e-commerce style system. Next, we have to choose the subjects we want this stream to store. You can pick multiple subjects, and in this case, I'm just going to use a wildcard for orders.star. We're going to have some multiple regions in our orders, and I wanna show you guys some really powerful tools around muxing and demuxing. So let's keep this as orders.star. You can choose between file and memory storage. In this case, we're gonna choose file. Replication is set at one by default, but you might want to make this more for more redundancy. Then we have our retention policy, which can be based on limits, interests, or work queues. Limits is the default policy and will retain messages based on certain parameters that you set up around your limits. The interests and work queue policies also abide by these limits, but they have extra rules on top of them. Namely, that the work queue policy will discard the message after all of the consumers have acknowledged it whereas the interest policy will actually throw away any messages that no consumers are interested in. So there's a lot of different patterns that you can use um, to retain your messages. There's plenty more interesting details around these types of policies that I don't have the time to cover in this video, but hopefully in a future one. For now, we're just going to choose the limits policy. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed through uh, the rest of these options just because they're there if you need them, but to get started with Jetstream, you don't really need to know all the ins and outs about them. Great, now our stream is created. It doesn't have any messages in it yet, but if we go over to our streams tab over here, we can see that our stream shows up in the stream list. Now that we have a stream for our orders, let's publish a few order messages and see if they show up in the stream. One of the great parts about Jetstream is that publishers can continue to use Nat's core. They actually don't have to have any knowledge of Jetstream. They simply just publish messages and the Nat server is smart enough to figure out if that message needs to be persisted. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a thousand messages for orders.us for the USA. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing, but for the EU. All right, let's go check back on our stream. And our stream ls command shows us that we have 2000 messages in the stream. Great. To read from the stream, I can write a nat sub and specify the stream. And it will read all the messages from the beginning until the end. Now, there are a couple different options for how to read through the stream. 
I can specify the all flag to read all of the messages like I just did, or I can use the new to just read only new messages. If I wanted to read the last message, I could simply use the last command. If I wanted to read a last command or a last message from a certain subject, I can just say last per subject and specify the subject. In this case, I'm going to use only the US ones. There we go. Lastly, I can also specify a specific sequence number to read from. We have a thousand messages, so what if I wanted to read um, the last sequence from, I don't know, let's say 995. That will read all the messages from 995 onward. So we've explored some of the options for how to start reading some of the messages from the subscription, but what if we wanted to keep track of how much we've read and then what next time we connect, we get to pick up where we left off. Well, so far we've been creating what are called ephemeral consumers. These consumers are created on the fly and when the client disconnects, they get cleaned up. This is great for some use cases, but not every use case. If we want a consumer to stick around, we're going to have to create a durable consumer. When we run this sub command, we obviously get all of the messages, but if I close it out and I run it again, we won't get any messages. Not until we start publishing to the stream again. So it looks like this consumer is keeping track of how many messages it's consumed. Great. One unique bit about how Jetstream handles consumers is a lot of the consumer information is actually stored on the server side. That way the clients don't have to have any sort of special handling of cursors or what message they last consumed. You can simply just trust that the NAT server has it handled. So far, all of the consumers we've created are what we call push consumers, which means the server pushes messages to this consumer as fast as it possibly can. Now, this might not be the best fit for your use case, which is why Nats Jetstream also supports poll consumers, where you can poll messages one by one or in batches. This time, we'll create a consumer up front with a Nats consumer create command. I'm going to name this consumer poll consumer. We can leave our delivery target empty since this is a poll consumer. And just like our command line flags, we actually have a start policy. I'm going to set it to all for this example. The acknowledgement policy gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of how the server interprets acknowledgement of messages from your consumer. But since we're using a poll consumer, we actually have to choose the explicit policy, meaning each message has to be explicitly acknowledged. Replay policy allows me to control essentially how to play back these messages on the consumer. I can choose instant to just get all of the messages up front, or I could choose original to have the same spacing and timing as these messages were first published. I can then choose a subject filter for this particular consumer so I can only look at certain messages from the stream. I'm going to leave this blank to get all the messages. I'm going to speed through the rest of this list just selecting the defaults until I'm able to select which stream I want this consumer bound to. Orders. So now our consumer is created and it looks like we have 2003 unprocessed messages. So let's go through how to pull messages from this stream via this consumer. We can do this by using the nats consumer next command specify the stream and the consumer, and then how many messages we want to pull. Great, now that we've pulled a thousand messages, let's check the state of our consumer by writing Nats consumer info and selecting our consumer. Now we only have a thousand and three unprocessed messages. Let's run this again, and we'll run our consumer info again. See that we only have three messages left. We'll run it one more time, and you can see we're going to keep waiting until more messages come in until we time out. Polling messages with timeouts is actually a really unique value proposition around poll consumers because it allows you to essentially scale down workers uh, as they time out and there's no messages left in the queue. Okay, so so far we've covered streams, we've covered push consumers and poll consumers, but what about things like key value and object stores? Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, once you have a message being persisted, you could actually create a lot of really unique constructs on top of that, which is why Nats Jetstream comes out of the box with a key value store. Creating and updating a key value store is even easier than operating a stream. Simply write nats kv add and name your bucket. And there we go. We have a key value store. This kv store has some of the default settings, but um, you can also inspect some of the settings we give you via command line flags. Most interestingly, we give you some settings around how much history you want to keep around the different values in your store. And because this is just a stream underneath, you also get to choose where in the cluster you want to put your store. To add a value to the store, simply type nats kv put your bucket name, key name, and value. 
To read from the store, you do the same thing, but using the get command. You can also watch for updates on a particular key value store with the watch command. So when I add a new value, you can see I get updates. And this is a super powerful construct for distributed systems, being able to know when certain values get updated. Similar to key value stores, Jetstream also allows you to have object stores where you could store large files or chunks of data. Simply create a bucket with the NATS object add command, and then upload files with the NATS object put command. For efficiency, large files are broken up into multiple chunks, and because NATS Jetstream messages can be replayed in order, you can reassemble these chunks into the full file. Since key value and object stores are special supersets of streams, they're typically hidden from the other stream commands. You can fix this by using the A flag to list all the streams. I want to close out this episode by looking at one more feature, which is stream sourcing and mirroring. Stream sourcing is a way to create a stream that gets its data from one or more other streams, with all of its own rules around ownership, location, and retention. To illustrate this in our e-commerce example, I'm going to create a new stream called returns. The subjects and settings are going to look very similar to our orders stream, just representing the returns in our system. Now that our order stream is created, let's publish some messages to that order stream. First, I'm going to publish returns for the US. Let's throw a thousand in there. And then we'll do the same for the EU. Great. Now, what if we wanted to create a stream that comprised only of the EU's orders and returns together? We can do that by using stream sourcing. Let's go ahead and create a new stream, but this time we're going to pass in the source flags to source returns and orders. I'm going to name this archive EU, and I'm going to keep a lot of the same options as my other stream until I reach this adjust source returns start setting, which I want to set to yes and choose sequence zero to start at the beginning of our returns. When asked if we want to filter on a subject, we want to type returns.eu, and we could simply set the defaults for Jetstream domain and account. When asked how to handle the orders stream source, we could simply follow suit, selecting zero as our start sequence, and then filter by source subject orders.eu. Now you can see that our source stream has been created with the orders and returns sources, and filtering on orders.eu and returns.eu, respectively. We also see that this stream is in the stream list with 2,003 messages ready to consume. So let's go consume them. We'll pull all the messages via the NATS subcommand, choosing the stream archive EU. And there you go. We're now polling from a sourced stream that comprises of orders from the EU and returns from the EU. And that wraps up our episode on the basics of Jetstream. If you'd like to see more content like this, or you have ideas of what content you'd like to see, give us a like and subscribe and comment down below in the uh, comments section of YouTube. We'd really love to hear your feedback and we want to continue producing more awesome content like this in the future. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.